Hi, my name is Cece. Welcome to my channel. I am a reseller on Poshmark and I am freshly home to Georgia from my original home of Minnesota. I have some more thrift finds for you. I had a heck of a time getting home. I had two suitcases full of the thrift findings I got in Minnesota, which was awesome. And they made it through Southwest. They made the weight and measurement limit. So that was all fine. I went into budget parking. It's $5 a day. And that's where I park when I travel because it's super reasonable. There were no spots, but I saw other people had kind of parked up on the grass medians and that. I followed suit and did the same. But long story short, I had to call AAA for help. <laughs> delayed my getting home by like two hours but I made it home my home is absolute inventory chaos I've got piles of unposted inventory not only from the Minnesota trip but the three videos I did with my thrift hauls prior to the Minnesota trip maybe like one two percent of those items have been posted <laughs> So, yeah, I'm really struggling right now. I have an excessive amount of inventory to be posted, which isn't the worst problem to have. But, anywho, the reason I'm here is I have more to show you. I did two small hauls. But let me show you what I got because I think I found some more fun items. So this batch, I'm actually going to go backwards. This is the batch I got. It's at the Brooklyn Park, Minnesota Goodwill Outlet. <laughs> on the 30th and I spent $12.37. I didn't get much and it gave me an average cost of goods of about $137, $1.38.37 per piece. So the first thing I got, I was at this bin where there were a bunch of costume pieces and this headband was there. And well, I won't post it for much. This is, it's like a vintage headband. I mean, I don't know if that's not sterling silver. It's got rhinestones. It's really pretty. It is missing some rhinestones, but I think it has so much bling. It's kind of like you can't really tell that it's missing the rhinestones. I don't know. I mean, I think if you're the type of person that like goes to Michael's or whatever, you could probably fill that in. If it was for a photo shoot, you could wear it as is. But I thought that was a beautiful piece. So I picked that right on up. Then I got, I really try not to pick up Michael Kors because it just doesn't sell. But this wasn't a great size. So it's Michael. Michael Kors in size 1X and it's a black kind of shifty sheath style dress with these like Y2K or Michael Jackson style gold square beads. It's sleeveless. It kind of has like an overlay split accent at the front and it is missing one of these little gold blocks. Oh, down at the side hem. It's barely, oh, there it is. It's right there. So it's right by the seam on the right side. It's barely noticeable, but I thought that was a cool, like, cocktail or party piece, so hopefully I'll be able to sell that. Then I got this sweater, which I actually, it was just, it's kind of Nordic in style, and I liked it. So I wore it home on the plane, and it is, it has absolutely no tags as to size or material content. To me, it feels like a wool alpaca blend. I wore, like, a kind of stretchy undershirt underneath it but it's in great condition it's just kind of that beautiful nordic ski styling no stains no holes so um it's really not cold enough where i live for me to keep it but it was super cute on and i liked it it looks great with leggings and boots i wore it with my uggs and yeah so and that was just sitting there in the bins nobody was interested in it then I got another, a few videos back, I got a North Face piece in size small. It was totally saturated in pet hair. I washed it and it sold like the day I posted it. Not for much, I think for like 20 bucks. But this is another North Face piece in size small. It's like a chartreuse green sort of plush vest. And it does need to be washed. Like on the inside, there's like a coffee stain. I don't know. 
So I'm gonna wash that. I did a whole bunch of laundry of all this stuff and somehow I missed this piece, but I think just because it's that neat color and it's plush, I probably will not have any trouble selling that. And then I got this, I might keep this for myself, we'll see. I keep on saying that about items and I really try not to get things that I like because that's a risk. But it's just this long sort of black um, short sleeve maxi mumu gown. It's like a freestyle, there's no, there's no size on it. It's just a lightweight, it feels like a cotton rayon blend. There's a few loose strings at the hem, but so like when I'm doing my posting, my Poshmark posting or, you know, just spreadsheet work, I love to be around the house in something comfortable. This piece will actually photograph really well. So we'll see. I'm going to wash it and I'll probably try it on. And if I love it, I'll keep it and put one of my other. I have just tons of like gowns like that that I wear around the house. So, um, yeah, that was a neat piece. Then I found this set. It's... So it's attached and it has this blue tag, which is indicate which indicates that it was at the regular Goodwill. Why is that not showing? Okay, you see that blue tag? So when I got it, I thought it was new with tags. It's a beautiful set of pink gloves and then a matching pink neck scarf. They're attached and they are Angora and Wool. It's clear that they've never been worn. Yeah, the brand is Aris, A-R-I-S, 50% wool, 40 Angora, 10 nylon. But, yeah, it's if it's ever been worn, I can't tell. So I need to get that posted. It's just super soft, really pretty. And then I got in that, uh-oh, did I lose some piece? Oh, no, here they are. I got this beautiful headband. It's like a tiara kind of headband. And it's, it is missing a few stones, like somewhere right here, but it's just beautiful. It's got the combs on the side to attach to your hair, and it's, it's sturdy. It's not like the kind of flimsy thing you would get at Claire's Boutique. The way the silver is tinted on there, it makes me think it's a sterling silver. I'm going to take my sterling silver cleaner to it and see if that gets at some of the there's a little bit of blackening, but I looked for the sterling silver imprint on here and I didn't find it anywhere. So that was a little disheartening, but this is definitely a vintage solid, not a flimsy at all costume piece. I don't know. We'll see if I keep it for myself. I have a few, just a few photography projects I want to do and I thought that would be fun. But um, for now, I'm probably going to try to clean it up and post it. We'll see. And then in that same bin with all the costume stuff, they had a bunch of costume items, but they were more, they were kind of Middle Eastern-y style. Like they weren't really the kind that fits with my closet. But this was a hair clip. It just has a black feather and lightweight kind of white material with rhinestones and just clips in the hair. So, and then the last item I got for that $12.20, $12.37 was this green shimmy dress. It's just a green sequined. So it, um... It triangulates up like it goes like that. And then the back, it laces, it has like that lace back, each of the, the string or the whatever you want to call it, string for lack of a better description, would wind through there. So it's kind of a lace back. But it's just a little mini shimmery dress. There's no tags in it. I think it was a costume piece. I think it would definitely fit a size extra large, which is what I am and just holding it up to me. The width seems like that, but what a great piece, especially, I don't know, St. Patrick's Day will be around the corner. I mean, I don't know if that really goes with that, but just a fun piece for someone to use for a dress-up occasion. So that is what I got on my last visit there, my second to the last visit. <laughs> I spent $21.52 um, for just over eight pounds, and that worked out to exactly $2.69 a piece, and I got some great pieces. So I'll show you the least interesting first. It was just a universal thread, kind of lined, cable knit winter hat. I almost got that more for myself in case it got cold. It actually did snow on the last day I was in Minnesota. <laughs> I'm driving to the airport like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to drive in snow anymore. This is crazy. 
I made it, but um, yeah, it started snowing the night before I left. <clears throat> it was pretty to see. I mean, I would have preferred to have the snow on Christmas, but anyway, it all worked out good. Then I got a pair of Farrah Skinny Ankle Jeans in Gray by Adriana Goldschmied. So that's a great designer. Um, they're stretchy. I looked on Poshmark at the comps after I got them. They're really not selling for much. I don't know why, because it's a good brand. I guess maybe because it's the skinny jean and those are not, um, they're not reportedly in fashion anymore. But I think gray is a nice jean color that sells better than other jean colors just because it's a little bit more difficult to find. And then I found, uh, I looked this up when I got back to the hotel. It's Polo Ralph Lauren and it's a quarter zip. It's cotton, it's gray. Um, I can't remember, I'll pop the name up on the screen, but the comps were actually all right on this piece. Sometimes you can get the Polo Ralph Lauren pieces that are absolutely oversaturated, so they're not going for much. But that one, I think I'll probably end up posting at about 30. And then I got the sheer shoulder, sheer, sheer shoulder wrap. Sheer shoulder wrap, you try it, you try saying it. It's got like velvet sort of abstract print on it, but it just, it has like, like that, like it would go around your shoulders and you could wear it like open or crossed. So just, I mean, I don't, I won't post that for any more than 15, but it's kind of a uh, artsy sort of thing. And it's got the flowers. Does it have birds? Mm. No, I think it's just like a sort of boho vining print. And then I have two awesome items at the end. This I got thinking I might be able to wear it just because I really like the color scheme. It's like a tan and brown and gray, just super neutral. But it's a turtleneck split front long line shirt. So it kind of like the front has this, where is it? The front has this flap, so it flaps over, but it's long. So it would look, look cute with jeans and boots or leggings and boots or flats it's stretchy and that was just kind of a no name it's called the the brand is love in and the size i think the tag says medium but i'm thinking this runs big because i think it could fit me so i got that and then i found a pair of fry boots this was, this was actually the first thing i found on that visit they're a nice kind of burnished brown leather both of the toes have um a little bit of scuffing but I think that adds to the character on fry sometimes. So they're not the Melissa boot. I didn't look up which one they were, but they're size seven. And yeah, I have no trouble selling fry boots. I mean, they sell better in black than they do in brown, but I think this is just kind of a classic style riding boot. Super happy. I mean, 269 for a pair of fry. You can't beat that. And then the last thing I got was a Mark Mark Jacobs purse. I almost didn't pick this up. I've never sold this brand before. Um, I wasn't aware of the value of it, but they have sold anywhere between, some people have let them go for as little as $30. Some people have sold them for as much as 150. I think the average price they go for is about $70, but it's got a magnetic flap. It says Marc Jacobs on the lining. And then it's just like the inside with the normal pouches. And then, the flap that folds over unzips and you can go put things in the whole length of the bag. So I already have this posted. It's in great condition. It's long enough that you could wear it crossbody. And it has one small, small mark to the leather at the front. I don't know if you can even see it. It's just a super small ding, like right there. So yeah, I was um, pleasantly surprised at what these go for. I didn't I've never found that brand in the wild before, so <clears throat> which I know it's not an uncommon brand, but I just, I haven't encountered it. So that is what I got for $21. So I'm not going to be doing any more thrift haul videos for quite some time because I have a just total crap ton of items to list. So I'm going to, um, if I haven't already inserted this in the video. I'm just going to take you a picture of all my piles so you can see what I'm going through right now and what I'm facing. It's it's great to have inventory and I feel like a lot of it is really solid good inventory but I've got a lot of busy work on my hands and not only have I not really taken photographs of the items in the three thrift halls prior to me traveling, 
I also haven't even gotten those on my spreadsheet. So I need to give them all on my spreadsheet. Then once everything's on the spreadsheet, I can start posting. But I've got items that need laundering. I have a small amount of items that need repair. I have items that need added to the spreadsheet. I have items that are hung up on my rolling rack and they're ready to go. I just have to take the photograph. So yeah, I won't be doing any thrift hauls until I get um, the majority of that posted. I might put out a video with some different reselling content, like maybe something around a spreadsheet or something. I don't know. But um, if you made it this long, thank you so much for staying and watching. It means a lot. And if this was useful or you liked it, please give me a big old thumbs up. And I'll see you all soon again. Happy New Year. Bye. <laughs>I typically follow a carnivore diet, but well, on holiday, I fell off a little bit. And on my way out at the Minneapolis St. Paul Airport, I got this delicious tuna melt with Chardonnay and orange chocolate. And then they just gave me the chips, which I didn't even eat. <laughs>